Hello everyone, um, I'm Kate. Uh, I am a writer and also a reader. I wrote a book called The Storyteller which was published last year which is a novel about uh, depression and mental health and different states of consciousness uh, and is also relatively experimental in various ways. And normally on this channel uh, I review books and I talk about reading. What I haven't really done in the year since I started the channel is talk about writing uh, and I, I wanted to, to try doing that a bit to see if uh, a short series of videos on writing or a series of short videos if it becomes worthwhile um, might be interesting to people because I will, I'll talk elsewhere about my, my reading and, and how I choose what to read and the sort of reading that I do, but I've, I've always read. Uh, and it's only recently that I started writing, uh, about, I don't know, maybe seven years ago. And I only did it because somebody who knows me well said, I think you should try this, I think you might like it, I think you might be good at it. It had never occurred to me uh, that I could write a book. And I think that was partly because I just... I didn't have any idea how it was that writing a book worked. So what I want to talk about today is my experience of what it is like to write a book. Uh, and if you write, tell me how you do things differently. And if you don't, then have a go and see whether this um, works for you, if that's something you're interested in. Because the way that I write is not how I had expected that people write. And it's also not the way that much of the advice one reads about writing would tell you how to write. So here is one, one way of writing, which may or may not work for you, but this is, this is what I do. So before I started writing, I had a vague uh, sense that you sort of start at the beginning, you work out what your book is going to be about, you probably think about themes, plot, characters, you write down a bit what those are, you plan, I'm a planner in life generally, um, and then you start at the beginning and you write through to the end of a first draft and then you go back and edit. And to be honest, I didn't think much about that. The biggest hurdle uh, for me when I first started writing was how do I get to the end of something which is a reasonable length to count as a as a book. And I had, I had written a doctorate, so I've written 100,000 words before. So that gave me some confidence that I could write the 70,000 or so of a literary novel. But still, when you start writing a novel, and I'm just starting my third at the moment, uh, that sense of, I have nothing. Everything I need needs to come out of somewhere in the back of my imagination. And I need to have 70,000 words at the end of it, or however many, um, which makes sense and fit together, is still, a, is still a terrifying one. But this is how I've, I've found it works for me. So I tend not to plan, in fact, or, or I do and I don't. I set out and I, I make a really detailed plan of what I'm going to write about. I come up with all sorts of really clever things. I do the themes, the character, the plot, all the rest of it. I never use any of that stuff. That is material which almost I seem to be coming up with in order to keep the left hand uh, sort of logical, rational side of my brain busy. And only when my brain is busy with that sort of stuff can the right side of my brain, the creative side of my brain, to oversimplify enormously, uh, get going and start doing its thing. Uh, so this time round, I started writing a book that, well, I started plotting a book uh, that was all about big 21st century themes. I was writing about uh, money and London and different cultures and immigration and all of the things you should write about if you're writing a big 20th century London novel. And I was going to involve settings in lots of other places as well, so it wasn't just a London novel. So I plotted all of this out. And then one day I sat down and started just typing something and it became a novel about mountains and extreme skiing, which is not what I want to write at all, uh, but it does seem to be the thing that makes most sense when I sit down and the thing that my, my brain is most excited by. And that's been, been my experience so far. Every time I have sat down to write a novel, um, there has been something which my logical brain has told me I should write about, and then there's been something else, uh, which is what my creative brain seems to want to write about. And when I first started writing, I really fought that. I tried to do the logical stuff. 
Nowadays, I have to say, um, I'm not a hugely experienced writer, but I'm a more experienced writer. Nowadays, I smile at the logical side and I get on with doing what comes from the creative side because experience suggests that what the creative side wants is going to be much, much uh, better written. So I start that process. And again, I, I feel as though I should be organised about how I do the thinking. So I have, I have apps on my phone. Uh, where I note down thoughts as they come to me. So I, I, work a, I work a day job and when I'm in the office, I note down random thoughts for the new piece of writing and I email them to myself uh, and I put them on apps. I never go back into the app and open those. Um, I never uh, look at the emails that I send. Somehow the, the act of writing them down is important and something then continues to sort of ferment at the back of my brain. Um, but again, those specific things themselves, which I'm storing up because I'm so scared I will never be able to find anything actually to write about when I sit down, those specific things never end up in anything at all. And what instead happens is that I sit down and write and ideas appear from the back of my mind in a way that increasingly feels almost magical. Uh, there are all sorts of things out there written over centuries, written over millennia about the muse and about creativity. Uh, I used to sort of laugh at those. Increasingly, the more I write, the more I think there may be, there may be something in this. I can't predict what I'm going to write. Um, what I write is clearly written by me, um, but I, I feel I have increasingly little control over what it is, which is a terrifying process because it also feels as though I have very little control over the quality, at least at drafting stage. The wonderful thing about writing is you can then edit and you can edit with a critic's eye. Um, and that's what I do. I, I write ideally without my literary trained critic's eye on it. And then I go back and edit as though I were a picky university lecturer in literature, uh, which for a stage I was, um, and, uh, and we get there that way. But the process of coming up with all of these little bits of ideas, which I write down religiously and desperately, and as though I'll never have an idea again, means that in my inbox, in my email, and on my phone, and in notepads and bits and paper all over the place, um, there are snippets of stuff written down. And the impetus for this video today came because I was um, clearing, I was looking for a, a clean sheet of paper on top of a chest of drawers in my bedroom and I came across a notepad. Now this notepad has clearly been sitting there for a very long time because when I opened it, there was a section on the first few pages, which I think must have been an early draft for part of the storyteller, which um, was published 18 months ago uh, went to the publisher about two years before that. And therefore this, this particular notepad with its snippet in it has presumably been sitting on that chest of drawers probably for about the last four years. But anyway, I read through and I thought, actually, this may be a snippet. This may be a snippet that never made it into the book itself. But when I went back, it's actually a snippet I rather like. So I thought I'd read it to you as an example of the sort of thing that, that gets written down, but which never actually makes it into anything. Here goes. They brought you in again, shaking, and tried to put you to bed, but you curled up tight like a bracken leaf in early spring. And though they removed your shoes and coat and took away your belt, you did not uncurl and you did not stop shaking. But now I am passing your room and I look in through the left open door and you are clustered in your duvet in the corner by the sink. It is pulled like smocking about you. You are rocking and murmuring. And if I creep up close and listen hard, I can hear you. Round and round the mulberry bush, and Jill came tumbling after. Vinegar and brown paper, and have you any wool? How I wonder what you are. How I wonder, how I wonder what you are shaking about. And yes, sir, yes, sir, half a pound of treacle. I want to tell you you have all the words upside down, but for a moment I cannot order them quite right either. And you rock, and Jack and Jill went up the hill, you murmur tunelessly, and then you convulse, and your breathing stops, and you something, and you are caught in the webbing you have placed around yourself, and your legs are swaddled in the duvet, and now you're on your side, only the crown of your head and your hair visible and sweating, and the murmuring begins again. Half a pound of blah blah black sheep, and you shudder and bite on the duvet, and breathing heavily, deliberately for a moment. 
I'm very close to you now. I reach out my hand to the moving mass that is hiding you, and twinkle, twinkle I begin, twinkle, twinkle, little star, and I hear it as though played on a quarter-sized violin. How I wonder what you are. Twinkle, twinkle, and the stars too are shuddering outside in the midst of the dark night, which is not dark because there are sirens in the distance, and each of those comes with flashing lights. But I don't have to see those now, don't have to hear the sirens. No. I crouch closer, and with both arms I encircle you in your quivering mass and put my ear to the duvet to catch the murmuring inside. Half a pound of tuppenny rice, pop goes the weasel, tuneless still, ring a ring of roses to fetch a pail of water like a tea cake in the sky, and there's a sudden twitch at my stomach like a child in the womb, and you and I are now in an immediate frenzy. Hush, baby, hush, I say, and I cradle you, and it's both of us together now. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder, and the little violin is scraping in the room next to the kitchen as I peel the potatoes for dinner and herb the lamb chops ready for the grill. Twinkle, twinkle, and the notes are wobbly, and then wrong, and then there's a sharp sob inside the duvet, and then nothing. You have gone still inside, and there is no more murmuring or rocking, and I too stop and hold my breath for a moment, and then, furtive, I tease at the duvet, loosening round your limbs, looking for the corners to peel it gently back to find you, to hold you. And then there is beyond a scream, and all the lights are on, and nurses everywhere, and for a moment my brain is seared with flashing light, and then it is gone, and I remember no more. Now, there are things that are wrong with that. Um, there are rhythms that, that don't work. Uh, there are, there's a whole load of words which, which don't actually make sense. But, but what interested me as I went back and read through was... This could have come from the storyteller. It never made it in. It was clearly never the right thing to to fit in. But the but the sense of the the voice is still there, uh, and the and the themes are still there. And this will be something that I I wrote down while I was going through that writing process over the course of the three or four years the book took to write. Um, and that's that's how the process works. Uh, it is it is much less organised than I would like. It is pretty random. Um, and I end up with little pieces of paper all over the place. I shall turn up some more, I'm sure, soon with sort of potential character names and ideas for plots that, that never went anywhere. So anyway, this is video one of a, a slightly rambling set about what, what the process of, of writing is like for me. Um, if you write, tell me, tell me how you write and whether the, any of this rings true. Um, if you don't, I'd love to know what your what your preconceptions are of what the writing process is like, um, and and any other thoughts you have uh, related to this. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, communicate again soon. Bye bye.